theme for today is unsit yourself <laughs> or unsit your okay. clients. That, that was my theme for today. Um, so Sarah, maybe I'll just tell you a little bit about how things go usually. And I know I have a couple more people for sure coming on here. So okay. I'll check on them in just a minute. But um, we have two things happening now during our rounds. The idea is that we can propose, you know, difficult cases or themes or difficult cases that we want to discuss as a sort of a round table so that everybody can have a little bit of input. On days where there's fewer people, we can all have like more of a discussion. On other days, we can, I, I just have people ask questions and we try and answer them. I'll give everybody a chance to answer to help. And then I've been starting to bring in some experts to talk to us about different topics. So last week we had an acupuncturist and before that, we had a doctor who does prolotherapy and PRP come in and talk to us about those treatments. And so I'm in the process of creating that whole schedule. We're going to have our pelvic floor PT come in one time, Laura, <laughs> Kim knows, um, where I'm talking to an OB, GYN right now to come in also on that same related topic. I love it. I have someone coming in to talk about the spine and I'm just working with him on the a spine surgeon to come in. Um, so working on getting people with related fields that are applicable, just so we can take things and learn a little bit deeper, take things a little bit further. And then for today's session, I have a theme and kind of a client scenario to share. And then um, the theme to this session was unsit yourself, because I feel like we've all been, we and our, all our clients have been sitting far too much for far too long. So I thought I would launch that and um, I've got some client scenarios, some problems that arise, um, some exercise demos, and then some practical applications that I put together so that I could share those. And um, yeah, so yeah. Well, I'll just briefly introduce myself before people come, I guess. I have uh, an online, I, I just taught class this morning on Zoom. Mm -hmm. So I teach mm -hmm. uh, Pilates dance, Pilates mat class. I'm a licensed physical therapist um, assistant. And then in the afternoon, I see private physical therapy clients for issues like knee, back. I've been practicing physical therapy for 30 years. Um, knee, back, total hip. Um, you can even do some total hip replacement stuff on the reformer uh, after about six to eight weeks. Yeah. So, yeah. Well, all right. I don't know if people are not coming, I guess, that, that I thought might. But if it sounds interesting to you, I can present the theme and the ideas that I have and we can go from there. Or if you had specific cases you'd rather discuss, we can definitely do that instead. So um, what do you think? Um, I have just a question, actually, about one of my clients, if that's OK. Um, yeah. The, well, really anybody. The whole cramping up thing you know the hamstrings cramping up the um it, what you know these people fair, some, a couple of the people are seem to be fairly strong and but they just seem to always cramp up in, at certain times and then of course there's my client with the neuromuscular disease that is consistently cramping up and maybe that's from the same sort of thing so can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah, yeah. So there is um, neurological spasming that can happen. So in the case that Kim is discussing, it, he has ALS. So um, it is oh. the inefficiency of the nerve to give the muscle enough information to carry the load that okay. it needs to carry, basically. So in in the neurologic when we're talking the neurological kind of cramping so it's um that insufficiency so if you think about the nerve pathway uh, you would think about the brain telling the spinal the brain sending a message through the spinal cord and out into the extremity from the spinal cord right with als those myelin sheets are not uh, healthy anymore, really. So the conduction is not happening the way it should. So the nerves 
get inform some information, but not enough information to get to the whole muscle or not a strong enough impulse to get to the muscle in order to properly or efficiently contract all the little fasciculs and the little muscle contract us so of the, the Z lines that shorten in the muscle fiber. I have to show you the whole muscle fiber um, so, to make you understand. But the idea is that the nerves aren't giving, the nerve information is not getting to a broad enough place in the muscle. So the muscle is not able to contract efficiently. And so instead of a good contraction, it goes into a, a gripping because it's in a, it has an insufficiency for the workload. Right. So, so it always, it seems to help if we do stretching first, if we do the hamstring stretching first. So does that indicate that we're lengthening the muscles a little bit and opening something up in order for him to do the work? Yeah, so there could, I mean, the, you're lengthening the muscle spindles and the muscle fibers for sure mm -hmm. when you're mm -hmm. stretching first. Um, the muscles are going to be, if they're compromised in exercise, my guess is that they're compromised all day long. So perhaps when you're, you know, you're still in the stretching, you're still pulling apart those muscle fibers. So my best guess would be that if you go into a stretch first, the muscle fibers lengthen to some extent. And then when you go to contract them, they're not already bound up from everything else that he's been doing that day. So you've given yourself a little more. My thought is that if you keep doing like a bridging is the best way to talk about a hamstring cramp, right? There more, mm -hmm. a lot of people cramp. If you keep doing a lot of them, he'll probably get back to that spasm. If, if it can't be a graded slower contractile response, or if the information is not getting enough, my guess is it would be the other interesting thing to think about is that sometimes the pressure on the nerve is coming from the spine itself. So it, if that's the case, it's coming from a spinal, um, positional spinal issue. If that's the case, right, the stretching may be giving a little bit of space in the, and, and this, mm -hmm. he had stenosis before. He, he had has spinal back, issues yeah. before. He has spinal issues, yeah. So we always do the back stretch to the um, breathing with the rollback bar. Yeah, yeah. So he, um, you might be unloading the spine or, or slightly tractioning in that area, relieving pressure on the nerves mm -hmm. from the spine when you're doing the stretching, even a hamstring stretch sometimes can do that, right? So you may be relieving pressure there when you do the stretching first, which gives him uh, less pressure to start when you then do the other exercises that cause the cramping. So it, it may not be um, the, from the disease. It may be from his back, the spine right. itself. Yeah, I know. Very, it's and, really complicated. And with the disease, um, my understanding is he's not going to get stronger than he is. He, he, and so we're trying to maintain. So those hamstrings probably aren't going to get any stronger unless, you know, there's some kind of a, a cure which by the way, he's been accepted into a trial. Oh, wow, that's amazing. Yeah. What's yeah. his age? Yeah. What's his age? Um, mid 60s. Okay. Um, my question is, so you're emphasizing Zana, Zana? Zana. Zana. Oh, sorry. Zana. <laughs> Zana. Um, lengthening before strengthening, right? Obviously lengthening first as much stretching as possible. Now, is that the same, like I have in the past have had MS patients, so that myelin sheath, same thing, right? So all those yeah. neuromuscular diseases have the same, okay. And then um, I was just looking up cramping and it said, um, I mean, I can get cramps, you know? Yeah, I'm, yeah. Now I'm in excellent um, shape, uh, yeah, we all, can, so there's a number of reasons why you get cramps. That would right. be sort of the neurological or nerve compression related cramping. Right. And just, just to put a little caveat in that myelin sheath is more the MS, the ALS is brain to spinal cord, brain okay. degeneration, I believe. Okay. Um, I, and I, that's what I remember yeah. it to be is the, is the MS. Mm -hmm. And then, and then uh, what about this business of like not having enough, what is it in the, the reason cramping occurs is there's a, what is it? New, uh, 
there's some kind of chemical or something that's not, not a so nitrogen. Enough electrolytes. So you can cramp from dehydration there you uh, go. also yeah. because the balance of that's calcium, magnesium, and potassium Magne don't, oh. yeah, magnesium is a big one. Calcium, magnesium, potassium. There you go. Are the, the trio. Right. So when you get dehydrated or even under hydrated, you, you wouldn't have to be like clinically dehydrated, right? Those come out of balance. And so they allow your muscles to contract and relax yeah. with good. They have gates in the cells okay. that allow the, the, those um, minerals to get in and out of the cells. And when you have an imbalance of one versus the other versus fluid, then you start to cramp basically when you have too little fluid. Right. So okay. that an imbalance, um, of these that's not true. That's not exactly true. You have, when you don't have enough of those minerals in those cells, then you um, end up cramping. So the addition of, or making sure that's why a lot of those sports drinks have electrolytes in them um, is because they want to replenish. So when you sweat and lose a lot of fluid, it's easy to dehydrate and cramp. Um, I don't know if you've ever, <laughs> you're athletic. So if you've ever danced so long or run so far that you've come dehydrated and your muscles just lock, right? That's because you've, you're, you've come out of balance. There's not enough minerals, uh, not enough electrolytes. Yeah. So that is one reason to cramp. And then there's an, the other time that people who are totally healthy cramp is it's because of the muscle work itself being in overload, usually in a muscle shortened position. So like uh, bridge, back to bridging, right? If you do a tight little bridge with your knees and feet right close to your bottom and you're not super strong in that range and you go and press up in a strong bridge, those muscles are already shortened. And so it's, they, instead of contracting correctly, they just go, and grab. <laughs> and so that's another reason why you could cramp. So if you were to like with this one client that Kim was mentioning in either case, whether you're trying to lengthen the spine or keep the muscle to work the muscles without having such a risk of cramp, you could put the feet out straight on a ball or on the, tra in the trapeze. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that the legs could be extended and then you could work on the strengthening. You still get hamstring strengthening, but it's in not in a shortened position. So the hamstring, the muscle fibers are able to lengthen and not have to start contracting, okay. short, shortening contraction. So they could be a, a contraction, the same, but uh, in a lengthened position, which would make him a lot less likely to cramp. So you yeah. could, she could use the Swiss ball, the big Swiss ball. Swiss ball, or, yeah, uh, or feet like trapeze on the Cadillac. Okay. Yeah. Or yeah. knees yeah. extension. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. It's, it's not just hamstrings though. Those are the, the biggest yeah. extenders. It's, it yeah. could be quads. It could be calves, feet, definitely feet. Right. Feet. Feet. Oh. feet happened to me during the class I was teaching today. Oh yeah. yeah, <laughs> I yeah, like, oh, yeah. I, and I had to tell them cause I was stuck. I'm like, you know, I'm not following my own suggestions, but that's because my foot's in a cramp. So you keep going and do what I say, and then I'll join you when I can. <laughs> I know. <laughs> my I foot do, was in such a cramp. I do these in, well, I do a uh, modern dance warm up. So first position turned out, you know, which is really Pilates stance standing. Um, we do foot articulation. Even when I'm doing my foot articulation as part of the warm up, I might still in a plank. I might still kind of get a cramp. It's like, okay, you guys, I have to stop. Um, yeah. 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 That, can I ask a question? Or do you, are you done? Kim? Um, okay. So I have a client that has a really tight IT band and any ideas? It's a Pilates mat class. She's dedicated. She, um, any, I can't, I was going to look it up, you know, on YouTube, but any ideas for anybody? Swiss ball. Yeah. She doesn't yeah, have a so flight performer. She doesn't have a performer. She's on the mat. On the right. mat. Yeah. So tight IT band is a pretty interesting topic um, because of its, of its fascia, because it is fascia, really. Right. And TFL, tensor fascia lata, right up at the top in the anterior part of the hip, right, right. Um, is the only contractile portion, which is about that long. And then the rest is fascia all the way past the knee. 
So what you need to think about, what I think about, there's all kinds of people rolling out the fascia all the time. Kim knows my pet peeve about everybody rolling out their fascia because I don't really believe that everybody should be rolling out their fascia on the roller. Exactly. So this is a no-no. Well, to- no, it, it's not a no-no. It's just not, it's not the be all end all. It is not the solution, right? It, it can be part of the solution, but alone for me, it is not the solution. And, and it is a tight IT band person who needs to roll it out not some a dysfunctionally tight IT band, not just anybody should be rolling out their IT band because it's supposed to be a tight structure. It's supposed to be tight and hold the side of the leg together, right? So everybody's IT band is tight, but some people have a dysfunctionally tight IT band. So that the dysfunction for the dysfunction though, I, I like to think of balance, right? So if you have, if, in, and maybe if I put it in, take it away from the IT band, but if you have somebody, who um, has their arm hanging at their side like this, and that's their relaxed position with a little bit of a flexed elbow. And you wanted to create balance. Would you? What would you do about that? You probably right strengthen the triceps. Okay. To get or, that arm to, yeah. to stretch the biceps yeah. and yeah. length strengthen the triceps. Right. So in in if you think of it, the IT band right, is, um, sorry, I don't have my thing in the right place. Hold on. No, this is good. It's pulling her patella laterally, I believe. Okay. She's yeah. complaining yeah. of pain on that right knee. Yeah. So the, that um, IT band, right, is lateral. Inside, we have a whole bunch of muscles, right? Um, we don't have a lot of muscle. The TFL I was mentioning is up here, right? Really short, small muscle. That is our contractile portion of the IT band. But lucky for us, we have the length from pubic bone past the knee with gracilis and then just shy of the knee with a lot of other, with all the other adductors, adductor longus, um, adductor yeah. magnus, yeah. that are all here inside, which can be used to balance the outside. Right. So if somebody's dysfunctionally tight and that IT is really tight, it can definitely pull the patella laterally because a lot of times the IT band has a slip into that, um, into the fascia that goes to the kneecap and a slip into the lateral meniscus. Yeah, that's totally what's happening. Yeah. So what do you do about that? Strengthen the VMO? You can't. Good. There you go. So now you're thinking about opposites, right? So VMO and adductors. Uh, Yeah, adductors, right. So adductors and VMO being the most medial of the knee, right? So we could create more balance by strengthening the adductors. Okay. And stretching the lateral side of the leg. But if we just do one thing, we're probably not going to get the full result, if you ask me. That's my opinion. (laughs) There are people who would argue and say, oh, just roll out that IT band and we'll eventually get better. I don't believe that to be the case. Um, You know, I don't believe that that's that's the only thing you should be doing. I think if you're going to roll out the IT band, there has to be uh, some sort of way to to either keep it looser, which would be strengthening in the opposite, or um, just to create more balance, right? Stretchy strength and it's fascia. So it doesn't have a lot of contractile right. uh, ability to it, right? It doesn't have, but not like a stretching a muscle. It's fascia it takes a long time to stretch. So I also, th- there are good stretches, I think that are, foam roller is pressure point, right? It's like myofascial releasing right. with pressure. She said she had, I'm oh, sorry. Go ahead. She said she had some massage therapist. It was a chiropractor actually who went real deep tissue. So I think he was doing some of this and then some, I don't know. And she, she's complaining of pain right in that greater, like a little bit below the greater, greater troke. And I think Mm -hmm. also the knee that right, the lateral. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. So I was going to do the foam roller because that's what the old days, that's what I remember from. Yeah. That's what yeah. I and, you, and you could try the foam roller, but I wouldn't try that alone. I would go for her. I would, everything you do with her that you can have her put a ball between your knees, have her work those inner thighs, 
Okay. So anytime our legs are in parallel, have her putting a little pressure inward. Okay. And then, and then start working those inner thighs to death. Okay. Like so go, that's, strengthening go nuts. <laughs> that's strengthening the adductors. We've been doing that with uh, the, the magic circle. Mm -hmm. And remember, okay. it's all on Zoom. It's all on Zoom. Yeah, that's okay. But I wanted to ask you both if I, let's see, if I can find, I, I'll show you my traditional, and you tell me if I'm, if it's old hat. It's uh, the way I do the foam roller. See, it's on mm -hmm. her right side. So, okay, this is, sorry to move about. It's so annoying when people are moving and they have to Zoom. So here's the mat. So basically, it's her right knee. So how does that go? Is it here? Wait. Yeah. So I can't that's the left side. Uh, right. Wait, is that your? Let's, yeah, that's it. Let's say, say, say it's your left it side. Doesn't yeah, that's fine. Okay. I can't remember. How does it go like this? So here, let me show you. Yeah, you can do that. Um, you could also, um, you could also. Here, I'll get myself. Oh boy, that that really I can feel that in that upper IT. Then, yeah, so it's really sore all the time, the IT band. So you could go okay. hip on, leg straight, other leg behind or in front, however you feel more com comfortable, and usually elbow down. And then you're you're gonna just roll along that. And I and I'd never recommend going past the knee. Right, so you never really want to go past the knee because then you're starting to go in those structures. And oh my gosh, it hurts so much. It does hurt. It does hurt. <laughs> yeah, it hurts. It, it always hurts though, whether it's dysfunctional right. or not. Because it's, and so, to, it's supposed to be tight. It's supposed, okay, so you did, instead of putting your foot in front, you put it to the back. Yeah, I put it to the back. I, got, I get a little more pressure, a little more weight off of myself. Right. Um, Right, as I go okay. through and here. Okay, and you're saying avoid near the patella, avoid. Yeah, so you would go maybe, I definitely wouldn't go to the, all the way to the lateral knee, I'd stop Got above it. the knee joint. Got it. Okay, so yeah, it's just too much, um, too much pressure and too much ability for that patella to shift around. Right, and then strengthening with the ball. Um, yeah, or the ring in between the knees. Yeah. Really working on parallel positioning. So um, I would use maybe less turnout and more parallel work just so parallel that you're feet? getting. Yeah, always. I always do parallel feet. Yeah. So the magic ring. Right. And then this is acceptable. Oh, bridging up and ring. Yeah. Yay. You could bridge up. Like hips up and squeeze up and squeeze so you're working the glutes you could all right you could just isolate adductors if you wanted to and, and a lot of different positions so what you want to think about too with that kneecap alignment issue is the angle of the knee bend affects how much motion that patella actually has right so if you try straightening out your leg you can really move your patella around while your leg is straight and then if you bend to 30 degrees or so, it gets a lot tighter. And then you bend more and it gets a lot tighter. So if you want to strengthen somebody for functional, for function, full function, right? And you're looking at um, countering the IT band pull and patella alignment, then you probably want to strengthen them in all those positions. So I would do bent knees to 30, squeezing in. Okay. I would do bent knees more, squeezing okay. in, and I would do straight leg and standing because that's also very functional. What about yep. quad sets and short arcs? Yeah, so that's VMO. Yeah, you could definitely work on VMO with quad Quite sets and short arc quads. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, but I would also, so I would also do the standing with yeah. the ball. We, I, I like to put it right up in the inner thighs with high as it'll go. Can you show and me then, that? Yeah. With the pillow or something? Yeah. Yeah, pillow or squish this is off. Awesome. This is awesome. This will help. Hi, Genevieve. We're we're doing tight IT band. My my patient has a right. Oh, I love it. Okay. Yeah. So it's way up. And then I can work on sorry, I've got big 
slippers on. <laughs> That's a smushy ball. Mine's just one from the 99 cent store. Yeah, this one is squishy. This is not that expensive. I think they're eight dollars or something. Okay. But you you just can work on that wrap and pressure. So it's different. My knees are now straight, right? So I can do this with straight legs. I can actually do it with a little bit of a bend also. Right. And then that way you're getting more functional. We're getting oh. all those places. Functional. Okay, that makes sense. Thank you. That's super helpful. Yeah. I'm going to yeah. try all those different angles for knee flexion as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Okay. Yeah. When you're working on the patella stability and then the other thing is, you know, sometimes I have clients that, that I end up taping their patella into position for a while so that they can function without having it sublux a lot. So she may, you know, need to look into that if it doesn't, if it's not stable enough. Yeah, but, I do. Um, I use kinesio tape all the time. It's like my passion. Okay. I love yeah. it. Yeah, I usually on the kneecap, I use the McConnell taping more. Yeah. So the the firm, the Luco tape, you know, that one with the under tape and I yes. really yank on, crank on it to hold it there. But the kinesio tape also can really help. Yeah, um, I don't do, Mac I wasn't trained in McConnell, but I was trained in advanced uh, kinesio. Yeah, kinesio. So I'll just sometimes, I'll double it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, to give it a little more. And not to mention a knee sleeve if they're like a biker or a runner, you know, mm -hmm. the, with the, uh, the, the, body glove, the body glove with the whole. Yep. Teller. Yep. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Very well, thank you. You're welcome. I'll write those down. Yeah. And I'll get the smushy ball. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I saw that. Great. Yeah. Yeah. These are they're not expensive. Yeah. You can get them on Amazon. Yeah. I, we really like squishy balls around. What's it, call, <laughs> what's it called on Amazon? Um, I think it's Pilates ball or. Yeah. Yeah. I saw it on squishy Pilates. ball or <laughs> I right. don't know. Yeah. This one, right. this one here says Pilates. Decathlon. That's how it is in Switzerland. Okay, yeah, Decathlon. Okay, cool. So, yes. Help. Any any other um, any other cases? Questions? No. We're good. Genevieve, any client questions? Thoughts? Um, not off the top of my head. Um, Sorry, I, I got stuck in some traffic on my way home, oh, so I apologize I'm sorry. for the wait. <laughs> no, that's I okay. I'm glad... it was... <laughs> um, but yeah. no, I, I, I can't think of any, I think um, one person in my class today, um, she's been having, it's, it's, I think meniscus problems, um, but it's, causing um, some inner thigh pain, I think, mm -hmm. um, or it's just strain on that side. Um, I don't know, maybe we could talk about that. Yeah, so is she, uh, the meniscus issue happened first or the inner thigh pain happened first, do you know? I think it's the it meniscus happened? first. Um, I, I think she just, the way she described it, she just doesn't have meniscus on the interior, on the on the medial side. Medial side. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, and so she kind of like avoids turnout um, mm -hmm. that aggravates. Yeah, we think. Yeah. Um, it, I I I know who it is, and I I Laura had recommended it, and then I worked with her the other day and recommended that she try not doing a turnout because when she came back to Pilates after the pandemic uh, time away, and she started doing the classes and she was doing the turnout and then her knee started to bother her some more. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a funky thing when you don't have meniscus. So, you know, if you imagine on one side, especially, so if you imagine, I'm just going to make the screen a little bigger for myself. Okay. So if you imagine, right, uh, the meniscus or the platforms of the tibia, 
uh, we have the meniscus on top, right? And they're like those kind of circular-ish C-shaped and cartilage cushion between the joint. But also what they do is they will maintain the level of the joint, right? So if we're lacking on one side, whether it's medial or lateral, that joint line, the space between the tibia and the femur is smaller. So the angle of the knee joint changes slightly, but it changes, right? So she's gonna be approximating more closely on the medial side than on the lateral side. So there's this innate little wedge happening here on the medial side. Wait, right, you can picture that now? Yeah, so holding in parallel um, is, and then being able to keep space in that medial side of the joint is gonna be helpful. Things that compress it. So turnout can potentially compress. My guess is that she's also not very strong on the outer leg. So you could really work on strengthening the outer leg, um, the, the glutes, the glute medius, the hip rotators to try and get those stronger um, without a weight. So maybe if we wanted to work her towards turnout, do it when she's not loading. So like not footwork, um, do it when it's on open chain basically and see if you can start getting glute to fire more. Remember, and this kind of ties into the IT band thing, right? Sometimes the IT band is doing too much work because the glutes are too weak. The hip rotators and glutes are too weak. So if that's the case, you know, really getting some strengthening in the glutes will take some of the work away from the fascia of the IT band. So, um, and that would be similar here. If we want to try and keep the medial knee open a little bit with less pressure, right? We still have to go full circle, but I would think about strengthening lateral since there's not any muscular structure here we go all the way up to the hip for that strengthening so i i would try that and then you know it's probably just that the other thing you might look at and maybe in footwork on the reformer she doesn't have enough strength to maintain the arch of the foot as soon as the arch of the foot drops there's going to be medial knee pressure so it may not even be so much the turnout as the arch and foot position that is making the medial knee painful. So you might look at that too. Yeah, I was now correct me if I'm wrong, but for if I have meniscal now, I, I had a minute, I'm 65 and I had a meniscal tear, but it was so small that I didn't require surgery. And I ended up not being able to really walk without a single point cane for like a week or two. And then he said, no, the MD said, you don't need surgery. So go ahead and just bike a lot. So I kind of biked it out. And that was what you were talking about with um, strengthening the glutes. But when I went on the Pilates reformer, I only did heel of, you know, the, the heel and the toes. I didn't really put any pressure on the uh, arch, like right. the arch. arch. Would yeah. That be what you would recommend just heel or toe? Uh, I always recommend either heel or toe. I never recommend the arches on because I, I feel like people. Yeah, I never use the pancake. That part of the yeah. fat at all. It's I, but I, I don't understand why people do that. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I think, think it, it gives stability to the alignment of the you know the the knee and the hip, if you will. Yeah. I agree. So we never, I, I, Kim and Genevieve know this already. <laughs> I never put the arch of the foot on the bar, but I think even with the ball of the foot on the bar, if they're not strong and the, the arch can still be collapsing, right? So yeah. that, can you see? That makes sense. Right. So if I, uh, here I'm holding up my nice flat arch, but that's my arch and it's a good one. <laughs> but here I'm no longer. And that, this change is pressure in there my knee go. joint. Okay. This is not, right? So it may be also when she goes to turn out, you're getting that, that instead of even pressure and the hip turned out. Okay. So Genevieve, is it a little meniscal tear medially? Is that what it is? It's not big enough to be surgery? Um, I don't, I'm not sure what her, if 
if she's been recommended surgery and she just didn't want to do it or um, yeah. it sounds like it's like gone. What's her age? May I ask? She's, she's almost 70. So yeah, so, I mean. Yeah, it's, it's just, probably arthritis. Yeah, if they're not active and even if they are, just getting out of a car can cause, <clears throat> right, Zane? She's active. Yeah, can she's cause active, a, a meniscal tear, a mini one. Yeah. Yeah. I was dancing, but it probably yeah. wasn't up. Who knows? I, I would look at her, um, even this little foot change versus the hip change and where she is on the heel or on the ball of the foot because that drop in a little bit at the ankle can cause the pressure whereas that wouldn't yeah yeah so yeah, I, she wound up doing a little bit of turnout um with feet and straps today and she felt fine with that so you, that that may very well be the case that it's the feet on the on the bar um and not quite having that alignment right mm -hmm. yeah I think uh, I would watch for that. I would, I mean, obviously not do turnout if that, if she can't keep, she can't keep it on her own. And obviously in the class, you can't keep your eyes only on her. So I would do what's, you know, always what's safer, but then maybe just think about those are the things I would watch for that. That is even it's, and it doesn't have to be big sometimes for that to get just pressured. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Interesting. Would yeah. you recommend like a body uh, glove, uh, like the one I was speaking of, with the while she's on the reformer? I mean, uh, her knee. No, I. I mean, footwork. Mm -hmm. I um, I might, but I don't know if it makes her feel better. What I usually tell people is if it makes you feel better. And in this case, I'm thinking. I would like them to strengthen without the brace on if we yeah. can and just find the right positioning. And I really think um, her knee is fragile. So I think, you know, it, there's a lot going on in there. I think so. I usually just shorten range of motion, change position, okay. find a way around it. What I usually do with the braces is I tell them if you're going to go play tennis or you're going to go hike, then um, that's when you want to wear a brace because you don't have time to think about how your foot's going to hit or you step on something uneven or you take a side step quickly. Um, that's the time where um, you want them protected or to have a little more time to react to the forces around them. But in the, in the setting, you know, with everything on zoom, sometimes you can't be there and you can't see everything. Right. So you maybe need to have a little more protection for them and it would help align them into the right place to get to get to that, maybe to get the strengthening done right. So that could be a tool. And even the yeah. kinesio tape, um, I teach them how to do it themselves. And it gives them that kinesthetic kind of reminder of how to keep that mm -hmm. alignment in place, if you will. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, I think it, de it definitely can. Taping can definitely be a reminder. Yeah. Yeah. I think it can be a useful tool. So yeah. Um, and in a big group class, I would say, yeah, maybe they need that support if I'm, if I'm that worried about them, but ours are right now only four people at a time because we're not very much open and we don't have big classes anyway, because we don't like to, <laughs> and we can't keep our eyes on people well enough if it gets too big. So me too yeah. on Zoom. It's scary with more than like five. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard. Yeah. Like, what's going on? Plus I'm trying to show them at the same time. <laughs> I know it is. Yep. It's, it's been our challenge all along. Yeah. Well, um, if you guys, do you guys have any more questions? If, if you don't have any more questions, I wanted to share something about my unsit yourself week because because I'm really into it. <laughs> uh, so I will share something about that. Let me just let me just pick out the most exciting thing that I have for you about my um, about my week. Okay. So let's see. My all my I did something today that I really loved. 
Okay, <laughs> what I did today, let me tell you what I did today, is I actually started a class with them on their stomach. I really loved it. I don't know if they loved it, but I really loved it because it was like a wake up call, you know? If it, when you're sitting a lot, um, your everything in the front gets really tight, right? So I had them start the class in sitting uh, and prone to open that all up, doing like single leg kick, double leg kick, baby swan. That's actually how we started the class, hands behind, um, opening up the chest, opening up the quads, the psoas, um, and then we did um, the lunging forward, kneeling lunge forward, and then back leg lifting up. So back knee lifting up if they could. So I, I'm really enjoying those ones. Um, and then the other one that I really loved that I did today was reaching, reaching the diagonal in prone. So let me show you that one because that one's I think new for kids. So at least maybe you go home with something new to think about. So I did it just flat, just to keep it a little more simple. You could do it with the hand on the roller, but what I had them do in the, the prone, the idea was that they're releasing the hips into the floor, right? So giving time for the body to just open, the hips to open, the belly to lift upward a little bit, which helps the pelvis press down. Um, just by, I'm not asking them to press the pelvis, I'm asking them to just create a lightness in the stomach to get that away from the floor a little bit. And then I had them doing diagonal reaches. So Genevieve, this will be familiar from the client we had today, but you're reaching the leg long and the opposite arm long, and then finding that length and releasing the hips into the front, but then um, just being able to reach and then down, and then the other side reaching long and then down and then reaching opposite. So it seems like nothing, but it's a lot of work and it, it's a lot of opening work. So it's just this stre stretching uh, out of the body. Um, we did it later, Genevieve and I were doing it with somebody else for a different reason, but supine, right? just that idea of pulling that hip out of the socket to get some length. And obviously in the class, I didn't wanna do it on supine because I was worried about the hip flexors kicking in, but doing it in prone, right? You're opening up that whole front line of the body getting that length through. So if you haven't tried that, try that one. It's really fun. And then the lunge one I was talking about that I really loved from today was this one where you're just on here controlling your position so that with your PSIS and then shifting forward into that stretch mm -hmm. of the psoas, right? And then if they can keeping that coccyx curl, keeping the belly lift. And then if they could do it, tucking the foot and bringing that up. Mm. And even if the knee had to stay down, but this one is so applicable. I had my class on Tuesday. I was showing them so that they had no excuse, like the sitting on the edge of the chair during your work day and taking the leg back for a stretch while you're there. So using these kind of tools, while you're in your work day, there's no excuse. Everybody can do this, even when you have to sit all day, right? They could do these um, and just get the hips to open up or even without much of a stretch, but just letting the leg fall, the knee fall right down towards the ground, right? Instead of always having the hips flexed all day long. Right. Um, so those were, those were some of the highlights from my week of unsitting people. And then of course my hips over roller, one of the classes we did a lot of hips on roller opening up the hips and um, we did some diamond legs. And if you haven't tried, if you haven't tried diamond legs with the feet, bottoms of the feet trying to press together, that's a good one too. If you've ever tried that, like we've done diamond laying down right, like this, but I took it a step further and had them try and really put the bottoms of the feet together and press the bottoms of the feet. That's really challenging to do. So if you get a chance, give that a try too. It, it doesn't, you can do it with feet resting or you can do a hips on roller to take some of the work away, but then just trying that feet pressing changes how you're using your legs and your lower half so that it's not 
so easy to just kick into hip flexors. So those are sort of my gems from the week um, that I wanted to share. And your husband really liked my chair dancing video. Oh. <laughs> I'll, put, I'll, I'll put have to go. Name in the chair. But it is a lot of hip flexion, except for sit to stand at the end. And it's to music. Oh, nice. I used to teach chair dancing to the, in the, when I was on the geriatric unit at uh, Cedar sinai So. Oh, nice. Look at that. I think he, he was really, and then there's one called butter, butter the bagel, but that's for people that are just sitting like my elderly clients who can't, you know, do anything, but the, it is a lot of hip flexion, but it, it's, you know, there's scissors and knees lifting and yeah, it's only one minute too, which is, but that, that kind of reminds me of, you know, instead of just sitting at your computer all day long. Yes, exactly. Yeah. Well, I'll have to look at that video. <laughs> I love the name, Butter the Bagel. Butter the Bagel was, yeah, you're on your back. I wonder, I wonder if I should show you Butter the Bagel. I don't have my yeah. dance togs on, but yeah, Butter the Bagel is pretty straightforward here. And usually I don't have the mountain bike behind, because I did just have to move the e cornice chair, which is actually okay so you're here and then you simply butter the bagel the uh, butter uh, the bagel you know same it's a modern dance move butter the bagel butter the bagel butter, <laughs> butter. <laughs> that's so cute that's really fun yeah <laughs> and then the, ch can... the chair dancing it's pretty, that's really easy and fun. You just do, you know, knee lifts, right? And then knee extension, wait, can you see? Like extension. Knee extension, scissors, right? Changement or, or crisscross, whatever you want to call it. And then, you know, uh, yeah, obviously. And then sit to stand. Mm -hmm. I'm, some geriatric clients, obviously, that have um, back home health clients that are, I mean, patients yeah. that are, uh, you know, they have balance, standing balance problems. Mm -hmm. So anyway, check it out. I'm doing a little self-advertising here because advertising is my problem. <laughs> I'm having problem doing marketing. Yeah. Yeah. Marketing is hard. Yes. Well, we have... Um, we're, I was going to share too what we're, we have going on is a rehab course coming up, a rehab certification course. So that is starting in June, the first week of June. So if you know anyone and could help us spread the word, it's for anybody who just wants to take a deeper look at, um, at syndromes or at just understand the rehab side of things a little bit more, know what contraindications are for different diagnoses. So um, like and blocks as a form of rehab, which is what I do? Yeah, it's similar to what you're doing. So it's using Pilates in rehab. Pilates as so, a form. So, yeah. And so, or in conjunction with, but mostly contraindications, what sort of best practice for somebody, how can you keep them safe? And then what are some good exercises that might actually help them right. for, for every part of the body? So it's eight mod or six modules long. Um, it's... It's a long, it's a long course um, and people could just take a module or take the whole course. So if you know anyone who is interested and could yeah. send them our way, that would be fantastic yeah. too. I'll check it out. That's a great idea. I love yeah. it. Because I think now yeah. people in physical therapy clinics, I mean, I worked at performing arts physical therapy. That was pretty cool. You know, where they had six reformers and we mm -hmm. had some, we were lucky to have some people from the Los Angeles ballet company but which was really cool, you know, like, whoa, okay, you want to do feet and straps already? All right, whatever you want. <laughs> but um, yeah, I feel like there's not enough education out there for specifically Pilates as a form of rehab. How can we use these mat exercises? I mean, we have physical therapy exercises, but. Yeah, yeah, no, I think so. PTA. I'm a PT assistant, licensed assistant. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. 
And reform so, like the former work. Yeah. 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 So that's about it, I think. Thank you for joining us, Sarah. Nice to meet you.